Well, good morning, beloved friends. So glad you're here. So I didn't turn all my lights on over here. I got some lights off still. See if I can brighten this place up a little bit. A little darker, darker. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that's too bright. I don't know. We'll see. Glad you're here for our devotions. We've been in Second Corinthians this week and talking about the different uh, metaphors that God uses for the church, for his people. And this one is, I think, my favorite in this section, and it's the jars of clay. And another way it's translated is earthen vessel, which I like um, a lot, an earthen vessel, because it's usually when I think of a jar, I think of, um, you know, something that would hold water, specifically a pitcher, a ewer, an urn, something like that, you know, these old big double-handled things that you would see, I'm sure Paul was very familiar with, that they would carry water in in those days. But uh, when we talk about earthen vessels, I, I usually think about like flower pots and stuff because that's usually the earthen vessels I see around a lot. Here's one of my favorite earthen vessels. <laughs> it holds coffee. It could hold anything, but it holds my coffee. It's one of my favorite earthen vessels. It's the right size, the right color, the right thickness. I'm guessing you have a favorite coffee cup, too. It's my earthen vessel that I like. Got a lot of earthen vessels around here. But I want to look at this chapter and see how the earthen vessel or the jar of clay is used in the context. He's been talking about having the veil over the hearts of those that won't believe, the veil for the gospel. And then he talks about how this gospel is such a powerful light. Good morning, Mandy. Glad you're here this morning. She got her coffee cup there in the uh, chat. So let's read through 2 Corinthians, the whole thing, and then we'll talk about this idea of the earth and vessels. Therefore, having this ministry, by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what, for what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure, that's the light of Jesus Christ, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been spoken, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us with the Lord Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase with thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison, as we look not only to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Wow. Wow, what a mind, what an inspired piece of writing is that. You, you could spend a month talking about that and barely touch it. But you talk about these earthen vessels that our bodies are containing the light of the gospel of Christ. It's, it's glorious for God to have thought of that plan, isn't it? You know, you would think something like the gospel would have to be carried in a jar of gold, a vessel of gold that would just, you know, it's the most precious thing. And so, you know, in, in the uh, temple in Jerusalem, there were articles of uh, silver and articles of gold 
and they were so precious. But here, when the gospel comes, the gospel is put in these fragile things, this jar of clay, <clears throat> so that the jar doesn't become the thing that overshadows the glory of what's in it. So when I think about a jar of clay, usually I think about something like this. I think about this terracotta pot. And you probably have a terracotta pot or a terracotta pot or two around your house, and this one's been chipped. That's a good illustration for the Christian, right? Some people say we're a bunch of crack pots, and here's here's the cracked pot, the chipped pot. And this is the life of Paul, you might think. He goes through life and he says, We're beaten, but we're not destroyed. Knocked down, but not knocked out. And it's a this one is holding dirt, so I don't dare turn it upside down. But I I think about those jars that Gideon and his soldiers had, and they had the light in them. And when they were going to fight against the Midianites, they surrounded them, their lights were hidden, and then the pots were broken and the lights were exposed. And they yelled out for Gideon and the Lord, and they blew their trumpets, and the light was shining, and the Midianites were thrown into confusion, started killing each other. It's quite an account of what went on that day. But you know, it's like us, it reminds me of Gideon, because we've got this earthen vessel, and we've got the light of the gospel in it. And this is a very crude vessel, isn't it? I mean, there's the terracotta just means baked earth. There's not much to it, and it breaks easy. And I think about if this is like Christians, you know, you handle these things with care when you put them next to each other. Knocking them next to each other can break them. And if two Christians bash into each other with their pride and their ideals, we can break each other. <clears throat> That's not the only earthen vessel. I've got a couple others here that are important to me. This one was made by my daughter in college, and it's beautiful. And I love the glazing in it. And it's a it's made well, it's thrown on the potter's wheel. But there again, even though it has special meaning to me because she made it for us, it's still just an earthen vessel and it can very easily perish. And so when you think about the different kinds of vessels you have, this one, the terracotta one's very plain. This one's really glazed pretty with this green on it. But in the end, it's still just an earthen vessel, isn't it? And some earthen vessels are very precious to us, like this one here, this little teacup, this china teacup. This is precious to us for the memory that it holds. Cheryl's father was in the Korean War, the Korean conflict. And when he was in Korea, he sent all this china back to the United States for his mother. And uh, it's gilded on top. It's very fine. It sits in a cabinet for years. It's very seldom ever used but it's an earthen vessel, really, at the end of the day, that's all it is. It's porcelain is, is earth. It's just a finer grade of clay, and it's beautiful to look at and hold, and it's very light. What a difference in these two cups, right? This one's crude, and this one's really delicate. So you look at these, and you think, you know, that's like Christians. We're all different shapes and sizes. Some are rough and strong and can be used for certain purposes, and some are very delicate and have to be handled with care, but they all hold that precious gospel message. And we've got to be very <clears throat> sensitive of that to one another, that uh, sometimes we can hold some people in too high a regard and think, well, they're, they're like a golden vessel, and whatever comes out of them must be the most special, precious thing. And it's just not true. All men and all women are the same. We're made out of the same stuff. And uh, we're fragile. All of us are fragile, maybe in different parts, but we've all got our fragile spaces. We've all got our strong or our strengths. But the thing that gives us the glory is that light of the gospel message that's within us. And that's the point of this passage. It's just amazing passage. Paul says we've been mistreated. Our gospel has been veiled, but uh, the gospel still shines forth from us. And we are like clay pots is what we are. And he says, we've been through all kinds of difficulty and we're chipped, cracked, and we're scratched. We've been abused, but we don't lose heart in any of that. And so don't think, well, I'm chipped. I've been through some bad things. I've had some bad experiences in my life. I'm no good anymore. You're still good. <laughs> this little guy here, he's still good. He'll be used for many years to come. 
And someday, down the road, somebody will throw him away. He'll be broken. He'll fall off the edge of the porch and get broken and spill his contents. But but uh, that's okay. He's made for a time, not made for eternity. Just for a time. And that's who we are. We're just made for a time. And the beautiful thing is, at the end, the glory remains. You know, when the flesh is put in the ground and when our time on earth is done, that's okay. We return back to the earth that we came from. And the glory, the soul, the immortal soul moves on. And that that's been transformed by the very spirit of Christ moves on to be with him in glory. And the spirit that has rejected God and wanted nothing to do with him, that spirit goes on to judgment. And that's the way it'll be in the end. And so all these precious pots, these things that to us we hold as valuable, remember, they're just earthen vessels. So don't think too much of yourself, no matter how much you gild yourself, cover yourself with paint and powder and gold and finery, you're still an earthen vessel. Let the glory of God be the thing that brings glory to you and to your life. Uh, that's the thing that should be shining Father, we come before you such gratitude. Father, we all are earthen vessels. Some of us are crackpots. Some of us are very fine to look at and behold. Father, we all hold the same gospel message. And we come to you thankful that even though we can be chipped and worn, we can still be used by you. The gospel is still valuable enough that can be put inside of us to bring value to our lives. And we pray, Father, that as we share that gospel with the people around us, that they won't be looking at us, but they'll be looking at the truth of Jesus Christ and what he has done for mankind, who he is, what he will continue to do in eternity. And so it's my prayer, Father, that today, as we consider this idea of earthen vessels and who we are, that we will have the humility that we need, but also we will gain strength from it, realizing that uh, it's because of... Uh, it's because of your wisdom that we get to carry the gospel message. And for that, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all I've got for you. Uh, keep reading this book. It's a beautiful book. and Sometimes overlooked. But uh, keep reading 2 Corinthians. Encourage you to spend some time in it. You'll be blessed by what you see every time you turn the page. All right. Well, Lord willing, we'll see you in the Lord's house on the Lord's Day. Have a great weekend. And, uh, enjoy. The gospel.